Th- just thanks very much for everyone for joining us this evening. Um, it's great to have such good numbers here, and especially you will definitely learn a lot off Sharon because she has very extensive experience when it comes to nutrition. So Sharon will be leading the presentation. Um, Sharon is from Monaghan, and she's captain Monaghan um, ladies football team. She's also involved with. Uh, Dunn and Moyne in Monaghan which are very successful ladies football team as well um, Sharon is lots of experience in nutrition and sport and she's been able to relay the nutrition into her own game as well so she, she'll be able to relate to a lot of the players involved in this meeting here this evening um, I'll hand you over to Sharon there now so um, if anyone has any questions they can just raise their hand so if you uh, hover your mouse across the screen a little hand will come up and you can raise your hand or you can just type into the chat box and when you type in the chat box then we'll unmute you or maybe Sharon if you want to type your question into the chat box Sharon will um, answer your question verbally then if that's okay so we'll just hand you over to Sharon there now Sharon if you want to unmute your mic yeah thank you Jackie can you hear me okay yeah can hear you perfect thank you Perfect, Grant. I'm just going to open up this presentation, so bear with me a second. Are you able to see that okay? Yeah, perfect. It's coming up on mine anyway. Grant, okay. All right, well, she will make a start. Hello, everybody. Uh, thanks, Jackie, for that introduction, and thank you for inviting me to do this call. Um, probably being from Wicklow yourselves, there's probably, if we were in different times, I might not have got the opportunity maybe to travel and do a presentation like this. So it is, um, it's, it's good that I'm getting to meet new, not meet new faces, but deliver the information, let's say, to a whole different group. Um, but um, I have this pitch now for the players, and I know there's there's a few parents and a few coaches here, but it is mainly pitched towards the players. Um, but that's not to say the coaches and the parents can't take getting from it. They definitely will. Um, I also have a pitch at a level that hopefully will suit everybody, because I know with players from under 14 level right up to minors. Um, so I kind of have it pitched so that it will suit everybody. But if you want me to elaborate net and do feel free to put um, a message in the chat box and we'll um, pick up on it, whatever you need, if you need me to elaborate on anything. So first off, I'm just going to get you to do a wee task for me first. Um, you can see there on the screen, I want you to record your weight in kilos. The reason being is because I'm going to do a task later on and I need you just to have a, a fair idea of what your weight is. Um, so. I have on the screen there just 50, 55, 60, 65 kilos. And I, I just, I couldn't put them all in. So if you kind of can pitch yourself somewhere there where you think you are. So you might say, okay, well, I'm a little over, um, I'm a bit nine stone. Well then just pitch yourself there 56, 57 kilos. Or if you want to run and uh, jump on the scales there, by all means run and jump on the scales. Um, so just if you can have a fair idea of your weight in kilos, that would help. And if you are running, just don't run yet. I want to introduce you to another task. Um, and the second thing I want you to do for me now is just write down everything that you ate today. So pen and paper in front of you, jot down everything that you ate today. It's now uh, shortly after eight. So you've probably ate the majority of what you're going to eat today, bar maybe one meal or snack or supper. Um, so just jot it down a piece of paper for me there, because again, we're going to relay um, back to that. And if you have something in front of you, it'll just help you to identify if you need to make changes or any improvements to your diet. Um, you don't have to show it to me. Nobody's going to see it. It's just for yourself. So if you could do those two things for me now, I'll give you a couple of minutes and then I'll join back in. Thank you.
OK, so I'm going to move on now. You can keep writing if you still need to write. Um, and just to say somebody's mic is on because there is a wee bit of background noise coming into me there. So if you just want to double check your mics there. OK, so whatever you have on your sheet there, we'll come back to it or if you need to continue writing and please continue writing. But um, performance nutrition, you can see there on the screen, why is it important? Why has Jackie asked me to come in and do this presentation with you? The reason she has asked and the reason nutrition is important is because it makes a difference. And you can do all the training you want in the world, but if you don't tie your nutrition in alongside it, you're not going to get the gains that you want. And you can see there on the screen some of the, the um, key things that nutrition does for us. And first and foremost is it, um, it contributes to, to good health. And for anybody that is doing any type of activity across the day, you want to be healthy. So whether that's going to school, whether that's going to work, whether it's minding kids, for example, you do need to have good health in order to be able to do that properly. But throw in the fact that you want to be able to perform on a football pitch or a hurling pitch. That means, OK, we definitely need to be healthy. But on top of that, we need to be um, we need extra to be able to perform. So that's the basics. Good health. But if you're not healthy, you'll not be able to perform as you want. And you can see there I've adaptation to train. And what that means is really you're how are you going to adapt to the training and the goal of training really is to become fitter to become faster to become stronger become and to become leaner and you're not going to get those gains so fitter faster stronger leaner if you don't tie your nutrition in alongside your training so if your goal of your training sessions for the last couple of weeks was to get fitter I can guarantee you, you won't have got as fit as you would have liked if you didn't tie your nutrition in alongside it. And we'll look at a few key reasons how that affects you as we go on. If we take our um, recovery, if we do a training session tonight, for example, and we want to train again tomorrow or the next day, if we don't, if we don't look after what we eat, if we don't um, consider what we put into our body, we're not going to be recovered properly to allow us to train as we would like tomorrow or the next day. OK, um, you can see there are a few other things on the screen, but we'll pull up on these as we go forward. So I just want to highlight here we have a race car. Um, I always start my presentations with a race car like this. And if you think about a car like this on the race track, before it gets onto the track, it has a full fuel tank. So the fuel tank's full and as it goes round lap after lap after lap, the fuel tank gets lower and lower and lower. So that car comes in for a pit stop to refuel. And the reason it comes in to refuel is so that fuel tanks fall again. It's going to take longer then for it to slow down, come to a stop or to fatigue. And our body is the exact same. So what we need to think about is every time we step on the football pitch, is our fuel tank full? So our aim is every time we go on to the football pitch, fuel tank is full. So that means it's going to take us longer to fatigue. In other words, if we have a, a training session and the training session is an hour and a half long, it means for that full hour and a half, we can give our best effort. And if we can give our best effort for that full hour and a half, well, then we're going to get those gains that we spoke about. You're going to get fitter, you're going to get faster, you're going to get stronger, you're going to get leaner because you're able to put your best effort in. And also like this car here is if we put the wrong fuel into the tank, it won't go properly. So if I put diesel into a petrol car, it won't go. And air bodies are the exact same. So if we put the wrong fuel into air body, we won't go. And we fuel ourselves with food, but there's certain foods that are better at fueling us than others. And again, that's something we're going to pick up on and, and edu try and educate you on the type of foods that are going to fuel us. Have a look here on the screen for me on the right hand side. You can see what sports nutrition is and sports nutrition. And uh, what we're looking for for players and athletes is that they have a balanced diet. So largest um, food or the pyramid here is largest at the bottom. It signifies we need to start here and that's a balanced diet. OK, so for every player, every athlete, they must start with a balanced diet. And then the sports nutrition on top of that is altering your intake in and around your training sessions or your matches. So what time do I need to eat before my training session? Do I need to eat X 
better because I'm training today. I'm not doing much exercise today. Can I afford to eat less? That's what your sports nutrition is. And then on top of that, supplements if we need to. But again, it's at the top of the pyramid there. It's very narrow. And in my um, experience, not too many athletes actually have to supplement. So if we get the balance right, with the, if we start right with the balanced diet and alter our nutrition in and around our training and our exercises, we shouldn't really need to supplement. Whereas on the other side there, we are, we're nearly tricked into believing that we need to supplement. Social media has us led to believe that we need to supplement. Um, supplement companies, for example, have us led to believe that we need to supplement. And the reason that is, is because that's where the money is. They're, the supplement companies, they don't care about um, whether you need to supplement or not. All they care about is making money. And we're tricked into believing that we need to supplement. But the reality is we cannot supplement a bad diet. So if you see there the pyramid on the left hand side or the inverted pyramid that's upside down and the balanced diet is narrow, those supplements that, that you might be taking are absolutely no good to you. If, you haven't got a balanced diet. So what I'd say to you is a food first approach. And that's again what we're going to look at here is, well, what is a balanced diet and, and what is a food first approach and how can I get all the nutrients that I need? That's what we're going to pull up in the presentation. So a balanced diet first and foremost is this food pyramid. Um, you've probably all seen this before and it is the boring old food pyramid, but it is a really, really good starting point for us. And we can scale up or scale back on this depending on what we're doing. But if you have a look at the bottom of the food pyramid there, again, it's wider, meaning that we need to base our diet on this and we need to get most of our diet from the foods at the bottom. As that's why it's wider. So we've got vegetables, salad and fruit. And you can see there we need five to seven portions per day. So what we're getting from these foods here is carbohydrates and carbohydrates are our energy source. For, for, so for any of us that are playing Gaelic football, we need to make sure we get this because carbohydrates is our main source of energy for football. OK, so carbohydrates are our main source of energy, which means we need to be hitting this five to seven to make sure that we're getting enough energy for all the things we do day, day to day, but also our training on top of that. And also this shelf here is it's full of um, color. So it's full of uh, vitamins and minerals. And vitamins and minerals are going to help us to stay healthy and injury free. And also the vitamins and minerals are going to help us to utilize our energy and to adapt to our training. So it's really important that we get them in there. So first thing I want you to do for me now is just have a look at the food diary that you wrote down in front of you and just count out how many times you see fruit and veg there. So did you have any fruit and veg for breakfast? Was there any present at lunchtime? What about your snacks? So just count them up for me and take note of them on the, the sheet of paper in front of you. Okay, so generally when I do this with a group and I ask, I go easy on them when I say who had three or more portions. I'd be lucky if half the room had the hand up for three or more portions. So I'm not going to ask everybody to, to shout out or to put it into the chat, chat box, but it is worth noting to yourself, where are you at? And if you are lacking, then that's a change you need to make. So maybe note that down for yourself. I need to incorporate more fruit and veg in my diet. And we can do that by um, adding color to every meal throughout the day. So maybe in the breakfast in the breakfast in the morning, you could add some fruit or berries perhaps to your cereal in the morning. So if you have porridge, add some berries to it. That's going to tick the box where you've got one portion of in the morning. Mid-morning snack could be a banana. So that's your second portion in. At lunchtime, you could have a sandwich and we could put some salad on it. So that'll tick the box for... Um, that will tick the box for a, another portion. Then in the evening, you could have another snack, which is a piece of fruit. And then your dinner in the evening could be um, meat, potatoes and veg. So again, you'll get possibly getting two, one to two portions of veg in your evening dinner. So that's how we get them in. And, and it's really important that we have color in each of our meals. If we go up to the next chef, then what we have is the, the cereals, breads, pastas, 
Again, they are an energy source. They're carbohydrate foods. And as I said, carbohydrates is the main source of energy for Gaelic football. So those foods, again, we need to try and hit those targets on a daily basis. And if we can hit those targets, it allows us to train hard. And it says there are three to five servings a day. But for teenagers like yourselves, you probably will need up to seven portions, if not more. So again, just have a look at your own food pyramid or your own food dairy that you rolled out and consider, is there a sufficient amount of, of carbs on your, on your um, intake for today? And if not, it's worth noting to make a change there. And note the colour of that chef. So that chef is brown, meaning that we need to take brown bread, brown rice, brown pasta. And those brown versions of the food are higher in fibre, and fibre is good for our gut, but also that fibre is going to help us to break down that energy a lot slower. And that's what we want when we're, we're trying to bank our energy for our performances later in the evening or the performance tomorrow. So uh, choose the high fibre, the brown versions. We bank that energy in the muscles, and it's going to help us for later training sessions. It, it's a slow release of energy. If we move up to the next chef, then we've got our dairy chef. And for all the guys here on the call, these are all teenagers, these are all still growing, you need to be getting five portions of dairy on a daily basis. For any of the adults that might be watching in, three portions is sufficient. But for any of the teenagers on the call, five portions of dairy is, is um, really important to get. So what we're gonna get from that chef is protein. Protein is going to help us to get stronger. And um, we're going to get calcium as well from that chef. And calcium is really, really important for bone health. And that's why teenagers need the two extra portions. So try again, maybe look at your own food diary that you wrote down in front of you and just count up how many times you see dairy. And if you need to make a change, note down that change. Because for you guys, we can only lay down the strongest bone possible in our teenage years. So it's really, really important to maximise it now when you can. What I'd say there with our milk, milk is the best sports drink you can get. So milk has um, carbs to help us to recover from exercise, protein to help us to recover from exercise, and loads of other goodness. So maybe take think of taking um, milk in and around exercise. Milk also perhaps alongside your dinner every day would be a top tip as well to get it in. Our next chef then is protein. I'm going to um, zoom in on protein in a few minutes, so I'll come back to that. And I'm going to jump now to the top of the food pyramid. And if you look at the top of the food pyramid there, you can see it's cut off. And it's cut off, meaning that we don't need to be eating those these foods every day. So that's the foods that are high in fat and sugar. So your sweets, bars, crisps, cakes, uh, burgers and chips, um, processed foods all fall into that category there. And we try we want to try and avoid eating these foods too often and actually it says maximum once or twice a week so again i get you to look down at the sheet that you have in front of you and just see how often those foods appear OK, and I can imagine if I was to ask for a show of hands, probably 90 percent of the, the room would, would put a show of hands up. And what I'd say to you is if you have that those foods featured and you don't have your fruit and veg featured too often, there's an immediate swap for you. So wherever you're having the foods there at the top, there's a swap, swap in something from the bottom. So if you have a bag of crisps as a snack, well, maybe you could swap it out for a fruit bowl. Or if you have a, a Mars bar, swap it out for a banana. And for me, the biggest issue with taking those foods isn't right, OK, I can't have these foods. Look, at for me is if you're having the foods at the top and basing your, your meals on the foods at, at the top, it means you're not getting all the other stuff at the bottom. And if you're not getting all that other stuff at the bottom, well, then there's so much um, goodness that you're missing out on, not just for your health, but also to allow you to perform on the football pitch. So for me, if somebody wants a bar of chocolate, by all means, go ahead and have a bar of chocolate. But I want you to make sure that you're hitting all those numbers below first, that you are getting the fruit and veg in, that you have a sufficient amount of carbs and, and dairy in there. 
But if you're eating those bar of chocolate and the crisps and processed foods for the meals, it means you're not getting the other goodness. And that's where a lot of the harm is, especially in terms of performance. So I'm going to move on now and zoom in on a couple of nutrients. Um, actually, Jackie, will I stop there? Have you any questions? Uh, no, no questions yet. If anyone has any questions, don't be afraid to type them into the box or even just raise your hand. Sharon, Sharon does love some questions, so she does. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I can't see a thing. I'm just staring at me, staring at the screen. I can't even see a picture or nothing. But anyway, <laughs> one. Um, right, so carbs is the, the next nutrient we're going to zoom in on. And you can see there on the screen, carbohydrates are, are your breads, your cereals, your pastas. Um, and fruit and veg are classified as carbohydrates as well. And these are our main source of energy. So what I need you to think about is what are you doing across the day? We're probably all fairly active across the day, whether we're um, doing a bit of work at home, whether we're out in a farm, whether we're kicking ball and constantly just running about at the house. We're all doing some sort of, of uh, work that requires energy. And even if you're at school, on a, I know we're not at school now, but when you are at school, that requires energy. Um, if you're at home minding children, for example, that requires energy. If you've been asked to do jobs left, right and centre at home, that all requires energy. So if we are doing those jobs, we need to make sure we are getting a sufficient amount of carbohydrates in. But really, really important then if we're throwing training and football matches in on top of this, you need to be, make sure you're hitting that. And when we train, our carbohydrate store, stores deplete because we can only store those carbs in our muscles and in our liver. And it's not an unlimited store. It is only a small store that we have, which means that if I train today, I'm going to run those stores low. And if I'm training again tomorrow, the stores won't be full again. And they definitely will not be full again if I don't eat enough carbohydrates in the day. So a good rule of thumb is to base most of your meals on carbohydrates. So the makeup of your meal should be mainly carbohydrates. So what that means is for breakfast in the morning, if I have porridge, porridge being the best breakfast you can have, porridge is carbohydrates. At lunchtime, I could have a sandwich. The bread is carbohydrates. In the evening, I could have a, a potatoes, meat and veg. The potatoes is the carbohydrates. And my snacks could be fruit, and that's carbohydrates. So if I can get that in there, it means there's a greater chance by the time I go training tomorrow, my fuel tank will be full again. The only thing is it can take two days for a fuel tank to be full. So if I train tonight and it's a tough training session and I'm exhausted, then what day is today? Monday. And I'm training again Wednesday. There's a chance that come Wednesday, my fuel tank won't, won't be full again. But I can guarantee you it will not be full if you're eating the wrong type of food. So we need to think about basing our meals around the carbohydrates. And the biggest downfall of coming to training on Wednesday and not having the fuel tank full is that you can't put your best effort in the training session. So if um, your coaches are doing sprints, for example, um, towards the end of training, and your fuel tank is, is running low, it means you're not able to give your best effort in those sprints. And then that just means, right, well, you've wasted a bit of that training session and you're not going to get as fast as you would have liked because you weren't able to push yourself in the sprints. And a big telltale sign that you are um, tired is that if you have heavy legs. So if you ever go to training and the legs are heavy and tired, that's a sign that you're, you're um, not fully recovered and the fuel tank's not full. So what you need to do then is think back on what you did and say to yourself, right, well, I need to eat more in order to, to make sure the fuel tank is full. And the biggest knock on effect is that if you're coming to training and you can't push yourself, well, then that's going to be the difference in you getting fitter and faster and stronger as you would have liked. And if we put it into a match context, if you come to a, a match and your fuel ta tank is running low, it means you're getting tired 10, 15 minutes into the second half. And that's not what we want. So you're trying to come every session fuel tank full and then you can put your best effort going forward. Um, so the food permit actually, sorry, you had your food permit, you'd count out your portions. And I've actually put this in here um, and I hope it's not too complicated. But for some of the senior players that are on the call, this might just help to 
to make you realise how much you need to eat. So it's giving you a little bit more specific information. And this is where I wanted you to have your weight in kilos. So the 70 kilos was about 11 stone. Um, I would say most of you are probably under that, particularly the younger players, you're probably sitting around uh, 50 or 60 kilos. But what I want you to do is think about how often you're training in a week. And if you're training about three times a week, you need to get three grams of carbohydrate for every kilogram that you weigh. Now, again, I hope that this isn't too complicated. But for example, if you're 70 kilos, you need 70 by three, which is 210 grams of carbohydrate <clears throat> per day. And if you're training a little bit more, it means you need more energy. So you up that to about five grams per day. So if everybody could just have a wee figure out of where they might sit, and I'm going to flick on to the next slide in a minute where, where this might um, become a little bit more clearer. But if you have your weight in kilos, just work it out there to get a number for yourself somewhere in the region of 200 to 350 grams. OK, so I'm just going to move on here and I want to show you how much carbohydrates or how much energy you need to be taken on a daily basis. If you look at the bottom of the screen there, I have if you are a 70 kg player training five times per week, you need to consume 250 grams of carbohydrate and that's equivalent to seven portions of the above. So what I have in this table above is foods that contain about 50 grams of carbohydrate. So one bowl of porridge will give you 50 grams of carbohydrate. A large bowl of breakfast cereal will give you 50 grams of carbohydrate. One cup of cooked rice or pasta will give you 50 grams of carbohydrate. Now, typically, if we sit down and have a meal with pasta or rice, we probably have about two cups of, of rice or pasta there uh, in the one sitting. So. Really what I need you to do, and this probably is a wee bit too complex, particularly when I'm not sitting in front of you, but count up, right, I need seven portions. So that would mean that I definitely need to get um, porridge in the morning. I definitely need to have a sandwich at lunchtime. I definitely need to have the, the uh, rice or pasta for dinner. So that's going to give me one, two, three, four portions now. That means I also need to have a supper before bed. That's five portions. I need to take the glass of milk with my dinner. That's um, six portions. And if I have a, a portion or two of fruit throughout the day, that will take me up to seven or eight portions. OK. So I hope the penny has dropped with some of us to say, Jesus, I'm way off. I'm not getting enough. Is it any wonder I'm tired when I go to training? Or Jesus, I'm way off. Is it any wonder I'm not adapting to the training as I should be? Or hopefully for some of you it's jesus i'm not too bad i was i was going all right there okay but typically what i find for um all players and it's not just teenagers but all players i find they don't eat enough and it's i i find then when i get people eating more that's when they train better and that's when they adapt to their trainings okay so don't be afraid to ask a question if you want um in relation to that but what the point I'm trying to get across here to you is you need to base your meals on carbohydrates if you're going out to train. Because if you don't, you'll not have the energy to put your best foot forward in that training session. And if you can't train well repeatedly, that's when you don't get the gains that you want, i.e. fitter, faster and stronger. OK. Next nutrient we're going to zoom in on is protein. And you can see there from the image that the protein is the meat, fish, chicken, eggs, there's beans, peas, lentils, and our dairy products are all protein as well. And our body is made up of protein. So when I say that our body essentially is made up of protein, that in itself is a telltale saying, well, I need to get protein into me every day. And we don't have a store of protein, which means that we need to get protein in every day, but also at different time points throughout the day. And for any of us that are training, every time we do a training session, we actually damage our muscles. So in order to repair that muscle, we need to ensure that we are getting that protein in, in a, on a daily basis, 
but also getting protein in after our exercise sessions to make sure that we can repair any muscle, uh, muscle damage that has occurred. And in addition to that, um, an ideal body mass for Gaelic football is a high lean muscle mass. And you probably notice um, that you do do some strength training with your training, so whether it's body weight training on a pitch or some of the older players might be doing um, weight training in a gym. But all of those are designed to, to uh, get you stronger. And if you want to become stronger and if you want to grow your muscle, you need to ensure that you are getting protein in on a daily basis, but also at different time points throughout the day. So again, a good gauge is to have some protein in every meal across the day. So if we go back to what I said about carbohydrates and basing our meals on carbs, if we throw in a little bit of protein, again, you're going to tick that box. So uh, what did I say? I said porridge for breakfast. If we make the, the porridge up with milk and maybe add some nuts or seeds, that's going to give us protein. I said a uh, sandwich for lunch. The bread is the carbs. But if we have some chicken on the sandwich, that's going to be the protein. And I said meat, meat and veg and, and potatoes for dinner. So the meat or the fish, whatever's on the plate, that's going to be our protein. And um, then for snacks, we could snack on nuts. We could snack on, on yogurts. That's, go again, going to give us some protein. And I have these numbers, specific numbers again, so I hope it's not too confusing. But um, for, for every kilogram that we weigh, we need about 1.4 grams of protein or 1.7, somewhere in that region. So... Um, the more often we train, and if we're particularly focused on weight training or, or doing stuff in the gym, you might be up closer to that 1.7. But if you're only doing um, pitch sessions a couple of times a week, you could pitch yourself somewhere lower at that 1.4. So again, I'd ask everybody if they have their weight in kilos to work it out for yourself. Now, you don't have to work it out. Look, it's, as long as you still have awareness around it, that's fine. But for some of the older players, they might just want a little bit more information around this. We have a, have quest a question there, Sharon. Sharon. Yeah. Um, is hummus a recommended food? Yes, yeah. So I know it doesn't come up in the food pyramid, like the food pyramid isn't an endless amount of food, but hummus is, is still good for us and it would, it would be considered a protein food. Thank you. So I'm just going to move on with that information there, just again to highlight how much protein you need. And again, with protein, a little bit goes a long way. Um, so if you're a 70 kg player training five times per week, you need to consume 119 grams. And that's the equivalent to 12 portions of the above. So um, the food, this table here, has foods that contain about 10 grams of protein. So if we take two eggs, um, that's going to give you about 10 grams. I'm going to go down to do, 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 take your meat. It says 35 grams of, of beef, lamb or pork. Typically when we have a portion, we're generally getting about 100 grams in or 70 to 100 grams of, um, of meat on our plates. So we generally have about 30 grams of meat. Same with chicken, a chicken breast will give us about 30 grams. So that 40 gram of chicken there is, would be very, very small amount. So again, just have a look at where you're at and how much are you anywhere near getting the amount of protein that you need. And if not, just make that switch and how we can get it in is by having good sources of protein alongside every meal. And again, an easy, quick fix is taking a glass of milk alongside your dinner. So again, with this page, I hope you've kind of said to yourself, right, well, do you know what? I'm way off in terms of the amount of protein I need. So I need to make that switch because I'm not going to adapt to the training. So I'm not going to get the strength gains that I, I'm looking for as a result of doing my gym sessions. Or is it any wonder I'm getting injured all the time because I'm not getting enough protein to help me to recover from my training sessions? 
We have another, another question, question there, Sharon. Sharon. Mm -hmm. um, is protein milk recommended? Um, look, at, uh, we need about 20 to 25 grams of protein in any one sitting. So that's the max we can kind of utilize at one time. For any of the, the we're all, they're all teenagers, all the players on the call here. So probably about 20 grams of protein is, or, is sufficient at any one time. So if we take a pint of milk, for example, a pint of milk would have 18 grams of protein in it. So you've actually no need to go for the protein milk. The protein milk, a pint of protein milk has 25 grams of protein in it. And that's kind of just gauged, pitched at a level so that, right, I drink it, I have all, I've got all the protein that I need. So protein milk, yeah, is fine. Um, do you need to go for it over and above the, the normal milk? No, not really, but it's still fine. Uh, we have another question here as well. How effective are protein shakes immediate, immediately after training? Um, yes, look, if we need protein, we do need protein after training. So um, it's important to get it in there. But I would suggest a food first approach. The reason being is because if we take a food source of protein, we're getting the protein from that food as well as loads of other goodness and loads of other nutrients. And actually, believe it or not, there's been loads of research done testing milk versus protein shakes and milk has come out on top numerous times um, for getting more muscle, ma muscle mass and muscle growth and greater recovery. Um, after training sessions. So I'll just repeat that. Milk versus protein shakes in numerous tests, milk has come out on top. Um, what I'd say also is that protein shakes are not recommended for anybody under the age, age of 18. Um, they haven't been tested on, on under 18, so that's why they're not recommended for under 18s. And again, it is a food first approach. And if you look at your diet, and make a few changes, you, you, you can get your, your protein through the diet alone. And for me, any of the players that I work with, the only reason they would take a supplement or I might recommend a supplement is that if they are um, finished a training session, they're jumping into the car and they won't get anything to eat or drink for an hour in an hour's time. So it's just to have the convenience. And I sometimes when I'm working with players that have um, milk provided to them after a gym session. But if they're jumping into the car with nothing, then they would take a protein shake. And other than that, players I work with wouldn't take them. Um, so to answer your question, protein shakes after exercise are good because the protein's good. But if we can get the protein from a different source, that's all the better. And uh, thanks, that was a great answer. And we've another one, is peanut butter recommended? Yes, peanut butter is a good, is, is a source of protein, um, but it's also high in calories. So in moderation, it is good. That's perfect. That's all the questions there for the moment, Sharon. Thank you. Grant. Uh, OK, so I just want to highlight these two images here. So if you look at both images, top and bottom, they're equivalent to 2000 calories. So in terms of weight gain or anything like that, it's completely balanced. 2000 calories completely equal here. But the top image there, if you look at the foods, we've got a sugary breakfast cereal with a white bread sandwich with crisps with um, Coke. We have uh, biscuits and we process foods versus the bottom. We've got brown bread toast with avocado and egg. We have um, a soup. We have a curry and we've got fruit and popcorn as our snacks. So, excuse me. Um, what I'd say is both equal in calories. But if you're eating the foods from the top, what you have there or what you're going to feel like is crap. You feel rubbish, absolutely rubbish, rubbish. You'll not have the energy to do all the things you want to do across the day. You'll be tired and lethargic versus the foods on the bottom. What you're going to get from the bottom is the energy that we can bank for our training sessions. 
you're going to get protein that's going to help you to adapt to your training session and you're going to get loads of vitamins and minerals that will help you to stay injury free and help to adapt to your training also. So what I'd say is look at the top. We could easily go and eat all those foods every day, but they're doing absolutely nothing for you in terms of your performance on the pitch because it's not giving you the right energy. It's not giving you the nutrients that you need to have to adapt to your training. So again, consider for yourself, where are you at the minute? Have you been doing a lot of training recently and you find you haven't got the gains that you would like? Maybe you need to make a switch. Okay, so make that switch. What are you having uh, for your breakfast? Could we change it up a wee bit? Um, I'm having a bag of crisps every evening. Can we swap it out for something else? Okay, and again, this here, um, Burger and chip at the top, burger and chip with 930 calories. But for the same 930 calories, we could have all those things there at the bottom, those five different meals at the bottom. So people say to me all the time, oh, Sharon, you're not going to let me eat anything. I'm going And I say, look, I let you eat loads as long as lo it's loads of the right stuff and loads of the good stuff. And if you see there at the bottom, what we have is um, the carbohydrates. So carbohydrates that we can bank and store and utilize in our training sessions. We've got the protein there that's going to help us to adapt to our training. And there's loads of color in there as well. It again is going to help us to stay healthy and strong and injury free. So the choice is yours. Have a look down at your food diary that you kept in front of you and maybe mark out where potentially you can make a few changes. Um, and I'll have a sample meal plan at the end for you as well, just to help you along there. So as much as eating is important, the drinking is really important as well. Um, I have on the screen there that we need to take about two litres of water per day. Two litres is kind of a figure that's thrown out there and it, it varies. For somebody smaller and less active, you might only need a litre and a half. And for somebody bigger who is who's very active, might need up to, to three, three and a half litres. So you judge it for yourself and you judge it by looking at the colour of your urine every time you go to the toilet. So when you go to the toilet, have a look and you want your urine to be um, to be clear to pale yellow. So pale yellow to clear. So it should nearly be see-through, okay? And if it's not, that's a sign that you're dehydrated. And if you're dehydrated, you're gonna get all the negative effects that I have listed there on the left-hand side. And if I was to say to you, um, playing Gaelic football, do you want a reduction in muscular strength? You'd say, no way. If I said, do you want to have reduced concentration? You'd be like, absolutely not. So why allow ourselves to get into this state? We want to stay hydrated on a daily on a daily basis, hydrated before training sessions, and then during our training sessions, trying to take water on board to make sure that we don't become dehydrated. So when we are dehydrated, we lose but we lose water from the body, and for example, we lose water from the blood. And if we lose water from the blood, the blood gets thicker, which means it has to, the heart has to work harder to pump that thicker blood around the body and up to the brain. So even before we start our exercise session, we're already tired and lethargic, never mind throwing in the training session or the match on top of it. So like if we have um, um, a half back, for example, who has to support the half forward, you don't want to do it. You don't you're already fatigued, you're already lethargic because you're dehydrated. If we take our muscles, for example, they when they lose body water or when they lose water, they will shrivel up a wee bit. And if they shrivel up a wee bit, well, they're not going to um, be as strong as possible. So your kick passing will be affected, your sprint speed will, speed will be affected, all because you're dehydrated. If we take goalkeeper, for example, high ball coming in, Lack of concentration due to being dehydrated, ball lands in the back of the net. OK, so all these things are knock on effects of being dehydrated and we don't want them. So try and get into the habit of carrying a water bottle with you on a daily basis. Or when you're at home there, just having a glass of water um, beside you and um, sip it away throughout the day. So really, really important to aim for that one, two or three there. And again, you'll feel much better if you're hydrated. And if you feel much better, you'll be more inclined to eat well as well. OK, so I'm going to tie a few things together here for you. Um, so before exercise, what are our goals? Well, the goal is number one, to come to that training session or match in a fully 
fueled up state. So that means carbohydrate fuel tank is full. Se second thing we're looking for is that we are well hydrated. So we need to get in the water into us on, on a constant basis throughout the day. So if our fuel tank is full, it means it's going to take us longer to fatigue, which means that we can put our best effort in for that full training session. It also means then that if we have a match, we're going to be able to last the full 60 plus minutes. So before a match or training, we should have our la large last large meal about three hours prior to that um, match or training. So three hours is kind of thrown out there as the ideal number. Um, it just means that you'll, you'll uh, get the food digested and there's less chance of getting um, a stitch. Where Now, some people might be able to eat a large meal two hours beforehand and there's no effect on them. And if that's you, that's absolutely perfect. Um, so what I'd say is this last meal is just the top up because remember, we've been eating well all day anyway. We've been getting our carbs in all day. This last meal is just the one to, to fill up the tank for us. So three hours is about right. It should be carbohydrate based with little to no fat because fat is a little bit harder to digest. So we want to, to cut that out as much as possible. And look at these foods here, nothing fancy, but we'll tick the box for us in terms of carbs. So we've got pasta and chicken in a tomato sauce. We've got uh, potatoes and beans, we've got a sandwich, we've got scrambled eggs and toast, and we've got porridge and fruit. So if we could throw them there, the pasta is the carbs, the in a tomato sauce, so tomato sauce is not as fattening as the creamy one. Uh, we've got the potatoes is our carbs, we've got the sandwich, the bread is the carbs, we've got our toast, and we've got our porridge, they are carbs. But never miss an opportunity to get protein in. Remember a little bit of protein in every meal. So we've got chicken there, we've got beans there, we've got chicken or tuna, we've got eggs. That's all protein. So never miss an opportunity to get protein in. But the key thing is there before exercise, we're topping up the fuel tank, it's carbohydrates. Now, if we want something um, prior to the exercise session or a little bit closer to the exercise session, we want to choose a food or fluid that will digest a little bit quicker. So it won't cause a stitch when we start running around. So something like fruit, milk, cereal bar, or even a slice of bread and jam will do the job for you because it's carb based. So whatever's carbs, tick that box for you, digest quickly. And that's what we're looking for before exercise. If we think then after exercise, what are we looking to do? Well, we're looking to um, replace the carbohydrates that we've just um, used up because we want to get that fuel tank, start filling it up for our next session. Because remember, it can take two days to fill up the fuel tank. We want to get protein in to ensure that we recover from the se session just done and adapt to the session just done. And we want to um, replace any fluids that we have so that we can get in a, in a hydrated state as quickly as possible. So carbs, protein and the water are key post-exercise. So we want to start refueling um, as soon as possible after exercise. So within the first half an hour to an hour is ideal because our recovery is heightened in, in that um, immediate exercise period. So if we can get food or fluids into us, then you're going to get the most out of them. And what we're looking for is both carbs and proteins. If it's just um, a gym session whereby there's little cardio, we can get away with with just protein. But if it's a pitch session, we need to ensure that there's carbohydrates there. Um, if we are jumping into a car and not getting fed for an hour or so, or if we're at school and we need a, a snack and we're going straight back to the classroom, we need to get a snack into us. So something small here I have that's convenient, like milk, fruit, yogurts. So again, they're, they're, they're ticking that box for us. But if we can get a meal into us straight away, get the meal into you straight away. And again, these foods, there's nothing fancy. Potatoes, chicken and veg, we've got our mix of carbs and proteins. Spaghetti bolognese, which is our mix of carbs and proteins, scrambled eggs and toast. Again, we're going to tick that box for us in terms of carbohydrates and proteins. So again, key is carbs, fill up the fuel tank, get us ready for the next training session. Protein is going to help us to adapt and re recover from the training session just done. And here I have a sample meal plan. And this is the... This is um, a routine that everybody should follow. So breakfast, lunch, dinner and snacks in between. Breakfast, lunch, dinner and snacks in between. And if we look at the foods here, 
they're, they're ticking the box for carbs and protein. So cereal, uh, breakfast cereal with fruit. We have our lunch is, is, is a sandwich, which is the carbohydrates and there's going to be some meat on it and some salad so that uh, tick the box for protein. We've got our dinner, which is uh, meat or fish with potatoes and pasta and veg in there. So that's going to tick the box for carbs and proteins. And then our supper, again, a bowl of cereal made up of milk is going to be carbs and proteins. And have a look at the snacks there. It's, it's uh, fruits and it's yogurts. And you can see there that meal plan there is probably for uh, it's for somebody who's training and it's probably for an older player. And for a younger player, what I'd say is follow the exact same pattern, but your portion sizes just mightn't have to be as big as an older player. But follow that pattern there and think about, am I ticking the box for carbs and proteins? And that's the big thing. Tick the box. You train really well. And if you train well consistently, that's when you get the gains in performance. Now, a couple of things I just want to highlight and something I would have noticed with um, with teenagers and teenage players is that they don't eat enough to support their training as well as the growth. So if you have your all the teenage players here on the call, you're all still growing, which requires energy. So you really need to be hitting that baseline of um, that food pyramid. You really need to be hitting that on a daily basis to make sure that you're getting a sufficient amount of energy and nutrients to allow you to grow. And never mind the fact that we're throwing training in on top of it. So that means you really need to hit that and more. And if you can do that, you're going to, to get as strong as you would like, and as strong as, as you can be. You're going to get as fit as you can be. And you'll have the desired body composi composition as well for training and, and um, a healthy body composition um, if you can tie the two together. And another thing I would, I would find a lot with teenage players is that they look for quick fixes. Um, so I know the protein shakes come in there, but I would get asked a lot about protein shakes and younger players in particular saying, oh, I need to get stronger, so I need to take protein. Yes, in a way that is correct. If you want to get stronger, you need to get protein. But if you're taking protein and you're still not getting the basics right of your nutrition, you're still not going to grow you're still not going to get that muscle mass that you, that you would like. So what you need to do is, and if we remember that image at the start, get the basics of your nutrition right first, and then you can add in the extra bit of protein that you need to grow. Okay, so protein on its own with a crap diet will do absolutely nothing for you in terms of your training or in terms of, of getting um, a desired body composition. So that's really important to note. We just uh, have a question yeah. there, Sharon. Should electrolytes be added to water during training and or matches? Um, what I'd say is, and I know I had electrolytes on the on the the text there, but we only really need electrolytes during warm weather. So, for example, um, today it was quite warm. Last week wasn't overly warm, but the week before that was very warm, and. If you're training or playing in that warm weather, I would suggest taking electrolytes, yes. So what electrolytes does, and salt is an example of electrolyte, that will help you to hold on to the body water. In other words, stay hydrated. And what I'd recommend is taking the electrolytes in your last bottle of water before the match. And if you've sweated a lot during the match or during the training session, perhaps consider taking some electrolytes after the training session as well. So the electrolytes are really only needed if you sweat a lot and they can be got in by making up your own um, sports drink, for example. So a pinch of salt and diluted juice in a bottle of water is perfect. So it's the pinch of salt that's going to help you to, to hold on to the body water and that's what we need. So to answer your question, I would only take electrolytes and I'd make it up myself with a pinch of salt um, on the really hot days whereby you're going to be sweating a lot. That's perfect. Thank you very much, Sharon. So I'm nearly finished here. A um, couple of practical tips then just to tie it all together. Um, first thing there is get enough sleep. And teenagers should be getting seven to nine hours sleep per night. 
And the reason being is because you do all your growing and at night, so you need to get that. But for any player or athlete that we have, you recover at night. So if you're doing a lot of training, you need to make sure you're hitting that seven to nine on a daily basis or on a nightly basis to make sure that you're going to recover properly. And also don't go to bed hungry. So when we're doing that recovery at night, it is even better to have some nutrients on board before you go to bed. So if you have some supper um, whereby you're providing the body with protein, for example, when you're recovering then at night, that protein is going to be circulating around the body and it's going to help you recover even better. Um, always eat the breakfast. So um, key thing with breakfast is if we start the day off right, we have a tendency then to eat better throughout the day and you're less likely to be picking at um, unhealthy snacks mid-morning if we have a good breakfast. Also, what breakfast is going to do to us is going to add to our fueling. So, for example, if I'm training this evening, uh, the breakfast is going to help put fuel into the tank. And likewise, if I've done a training session last night, the breakfast is going to help me to recover from last night's training session. Uh, get into the habit of carrying the water bottle, as we said, just to stay hydrated. Pack a recovery snack if you're not going to get a meal in straight away. Uh, be a little bit more organized. So I, a lot of the stuff that was on the presentation here, it was probably quite simple. Um, all the, the meal ideas and that were quite simple, but sometimes it's hard to carry that out because of lack of time and we're rushing here, there and everywhere. So perhaps it's worth thinking about uh, prepping your meals. Um, and you can see there it's buying a cookbook. So for any of the guys on the call here, um, might be no harm when we're in isolation or in lockdown and you're off school, that you have a little bit more time in your hands, maybe perfect two or three meals that um, will stand you in good stead and will carry you over, um, keep you ticking over. So it's no harm practicing uh, the cooking skills when you are off. A um, couple of other things then, get rid of the added sugar, replace the sugary snacks with fruit and nuts. So that's a, uh, an easy fix that will make a big difference there. Focus in on what we do before and after exercise. So if you do nothing else, maybe focus in on what you're doing around that time period and that in itself might make a small difference for you. And then keeping a food diary every so often. So for example, at the start of this presentation, I got you to write down your food just so that you could be a little bit more aware of what you're at and that you could see if improvements were needed or where changes could be made. So every so often it might be no harm just to, to write a food diary to check in on yourself. Um, using the, the food pyramid so you can Google the food pyramid and it will come up. And um, there's some good resources on, on the safefood.eu website. So that's safefood.eu. And there's some good resources there around the food pyramid and help you to guide your portion sizes and um, get more uh, fruit and veg and whatnot into you. So every so often, maybe just keep the food diary to check in to see where you're at. And, and then that's going to lead you to have that healthy, balanced diet. But if we can get that healthy, balanced diet, and then tie in our, our pre and post exercise nutrition alongside that, Get the the, the water um, water bottle with you at all times. So get into the habit of carrying it, and that in itself, alongside our training, is going to help us to improve our body composition. But if we can do all of that on a consistent basis, what it's going to lead to is improved performance. And if we take anybody on the call here, I can guarantee you, you're training three, four times a week, if not more. And if you're willing to give up your time for three or four plus times a week, why not tie in the nutrition alongside it? And I'm telling you now, your performance will go through the roof. And I know these are all dotted around the county and all coming from different teams and you only perform together maybe um, for different time periods. But can you imagine that if, if you had your your um, nutrition right and your performance levels increased and then the next fellas did and the next fellas did and the next fellas all of a sudden you've got 15 20 players and all performing at a top level which means the performance of the team is going to go through the roof okay so that's the key thing there get your nutrition tie it alongside your training and you will get the goals out of that training whether it be fitter faster stronger leaner and that's what's going to lead to the improved performance. 
So thank you very much. Um, you can send in any questions there that you might have, and Jackie, you can fill me in there. Yeah, no problem. I'll just give you a couple of minutes there and type in your questions, lads. Um, but Sharon, thanks very much. That was a very good um, a workshop. I, I even took a few things from it myself. Um, so Paul has a question there. What foods would you suggest players take in at halftime? Yes, so at half time, the focus is on carbohydrates. So the easily digested carbohydrates would be fruits. So any of your fruits, bananas being a particular, uh, like a, a half a banana, for example, being particularly good. Melons particularly good there as well. Um, then your sports drinks. So I'd only really recommend the sports drinks for the older age groups. Um, so your your minors and, and older would rec would benefit from the sports drinks. But if we come well fueled, we should have enough energy to see out the game without needing anything at half time. That's perfect. And just um, a question for myself there on the eating after. Would you be as well to eat a lot more carbs than your protein after a training or a match or would you be better off going higher protein than carbs um what i'd say is for every meal we have try and get about 20 grams of protein and that's the same post exercise try and go about 20 grams of protein post exercise and then depending on what type of session it was uh you probably will if it's a pitch session for example you will need higher carbs um so the balance I would say post exercise, go for both carbs and protein, but lower carbs if it's not um, a pitch session or cardio session. Yeah, that's perfect. Thanks very much. We'll just give it another uh, minute there. Um, I see ham was on the list for sandwich filling. I read that it wasn't healthy, particularly the processed kind. Yes. Um, look, it's. It, we kind of want to try and avoid processed as much as possible. Um, so look at ham was listed because we're not all saints and angels. Um, and it's, it's sometimes it's convenient, but there is better sources of protein out there. Perfect. Thank you. Just give it a, another second or two if anyone else has any questions to type them in. Or if anyone even wants to unmute the mic there and to ask her a question, there's welcome to. I think that's it then, Sharon. Um, thanks, thanks very much. That was a great presentation. Um, and as you said at the beginning of the presentation, we probably wouldn't have um, been in contact with you just with been so far away um, but this is a great opportunity I suppose and we, your knowledge could be shared down here in Wicklow so um, thanks very much for that, it's very much appreciated no there's problem. lots of thank There's lots of thank you messages coming in and they got some great information from it there so excellent presentation, very informative so that's a good sign on your part so thanks, <laughs> thanks very much I actually I've delivered a couple of these recently and I, I was fine. I was stuttering across myself there. I was like, I think I've said this before. <laughs> no, you don't, you've done a great job. So thank, thanks very much. No problem, Jackie. Talk to you soon. No problem. Take care. Bye-bye.